Welcome back to Films Recapped. Today I will show you an action thriller film from 2014, called Three Days to Kill. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy. At Langley, Virginia's CIA headquarters, Agent Vivi DeLay meets with the CIA director and another guy is discussing their intended victim, Wolfgang Braun, aka The Wolf. Together with his companion the albino, the man is trying to sell weapons to terrorists. Vivi is given the mission by the men to kill them both. Which agent do they have on the ground? She queries. Ethan Renner is his name. Ethan and Yasmin, another agent, are about to assassinate the albino, who is preparing to strike a deal with Serbians when we first see him in a hotel in Paris. The albino and Ethan quickly exchange briefcases holding secret codes after Ethan has already slain the buyers. When his phone rings to remind him that it is his daughter Zoe's birthday, he turns to hand them over to other agents in a van. He hurries to a pay phone to make a call and uses his watch as security with a nearby business to receive change. His call to Zoe is answered by her voicemail. Yasmin's identity is betrayed inside the hotel when the albino spots her. He leads her to an elevator and waits for it to descend so he can have it cut off her head. A gunfight breaks out in the hotel lobby and outside as a result of his cronies shooting at the agents in the vehicle. Before pursuing the bad guy, Ethan murders the albino's crew. Up until he catches up to the albino, Ethan starts to grow weak and dizzy. Before shooting the albino in the foot, he collapses to the ground. As Ethan goes unconscious, he staggers off. When Ethan awakens in the hospital, a doctor informs him that his lung cancer has spread. He estimates Ethan has three to five months remaining. When Ethan goes back to his flat, he discovers that a family is residing there. Jules, the patriarch, enthusiastically welcomes Ethan back and explains that they are refugees looking for a new home. When he goes to complain, he is informed that if he drives the family away, he risked being arrested. Ethan returns and pulls a revolver in Jules's face, but he quickly backs down and offers to stay until his oldest daughter gives birth. Tina receives a call from Ethan while she meets up with pals. Until he insists that they meet right away, she is reluctant to do so. He tells her that he is dying and doesn't want Zoe to know as they proceed to sign his will. Tina agrees to let him meet up with her if he declares his resignation from them, but only after that. Yes, Ethan responds. The two of them visit Zoe's school to meet her. She has an uneasy reunion with her father and doesn't appear really interested in chatting to him. Zoe welcomes a tall, good-looking boy over and calls him Hugh. Even though he is obviously concerned when she introduces them, he is nice to Ethan. Ethan gives Zoe a purple bike since he believes it is still her favorite color after Hugh departs. Ethan is left to ride the bike by himself as she chooses to take the subway with her companions. When Ethan comes to a stop, Vivi welcomes him. She says, Zoe, and then hands him the watch he left beside the motel. She convinces him to ride with her and orders him to do her bidding. She must first claim that she has an experimental medicine that can save his life before he agrees. Ethan changes his mind, and Vivi informs him that his task is to track down the wolf and kill him. To find a someone who can tell them where to find the albino's accountant, Vivi brings Ethan to a motel. She claims there is just one man inside, but when Ethan enters the room where their target is, he discovers five men. When no one provides them with any information, he and Vivi end up killing everyone. Ethan informs her in the elevator that he will only accept the assignment if he is offered $50,000 and a $1 million life insurance policy. She complies and administers the medicine as a shot to him. The albino is seen getting together with a male. He provides the man with an image of Ethan to carry with him. Ethan hears Zoe screaming as he enters Tina and Zoe's apartment. He smashes the doorknob and bursts in, believing she is in danger, only to discover that she is unhappy about her hairstyle. Tina is upset with Ethan since he promised to make dinner earlier but is now three hours late. She plans to hire a sitter to watch Zoe because she has to leave for London the following day for work, but Ethan insisted that she let him take care of her. Later, Ethan begins to feel faint and dizzy. He informs Vivi over the phone that he's having visions. She advises him to sip vodka to relax. He actually does that. The following day, Tina departs, and Zoe enters the room sporting a red wig. Ethan assures her it's her employer after she notices Vivi ringing his phone. When she phones Ethan, she sets the Icona pop song I don't care as his ringtone. Ethan tries to get Zoe to ride the bike to school once more, but she chooses to walk and drop the wig. Vivi and Ethan have another meeting. She hands him the check she had promised him while advising him to maintain a modest heart rate. She instructs Ethan to look for Mitat Yilmaz, a vehicle salesperson. Ethan visits the dealership, belittles Mitat's staff members, and knocks them unconscious before waiting for Mitat to return in his office. Until he receives a call from Zoe's school asking him to speak with the principal, Ethan threatens Mitat's family and takes him back to the apartment. Mitat is placed in the trunk after being taken along by the man. The principal meets with Ethan and Zoe. He finds out that Zoe assaulted another student. Open palm or closed fist, he inquires. As they depart, Zoe explains to Ethan why she attacked the girl. She was making fun of a Pakistani girl. 
Ethan assures her it's a good approach to get rid of a bully and that he isn't angry. Ethan is compelled to go punch Mitad and order him to stop complaining when he starts making a scene in the trunk. Zoe departs him because of his actions and his persistent coughing. She later apologizes and calls him back, asking him to meet her at her favorite location, a tiny theme park where she loves to ride the flying chairs. Ethan first departs to continue looking for the accountant, but he later returns to meet with Zoe. After the ride, they enjoy hot chocolate. He is informed that she must leave to study with her lab colleague. When Ethan enters a store, a man brandishing a shotgun attacks him. Ethan is shot by him, but he gets up unharmed since, more than likely, he was wearing a vest. They then engage in combat. By stabbing Ethan in the neck, the man comes dangerously close to killing him, but he is shot and dies. Then, Ethan observes that the man was holding a picture of himself. When Ethan gets home, he finds a message from a friend telling her she'll meet her at the tattoo gallery on Zoe's computer. Ethan rushes to this location out of concern and discovers a car with Zoe's bag in it. He enters it by force and discovers a flyer for Spider. He visits Mitat's home and inquires about Spider from the twin daughters of the guy. They inform him that it is a nice home. When Ethan visits the nightclub Spider, he sees Zoe enjoying a drink with some friends. He takes a sip of vodka as he starts to feel lightheaded once more. When he follows Zoe to the restroom, he sees three men obstructing her privacy. Ethan is restrained by one of the lad's friends, but he transforms into a wolf and kicks everyone in their asses before rescuing Zoe. The following morning, Zoe awakens with no recollection of the previous evening. Ethan tells her not to go to school in such manner as she is still wearing her outfit. She furiously tells him that he never taught her how to ride a bike as she refuses to ride the bike to school. The audience cheers as he spends the morning instructing her. Later, Zoe cries as she inquires about his long absence. He assures her that is not the case, she believes he has a second family and another daughter. As their conversation continues, Zoe acknowledges that she struck the student at school because she was making advances toward Hugh. Hugh eventually runs into them while he is driving Zoe to school. As the accountant, Guido, is led through the streets, Ethan finds him. Before blowing up the van, Ethan fires a tear gas grenade at the automobile and captures Guido. He brings Guido to his flat where he exchanges the bag containing the codes for the explosives that the wolf and the albino are in possession of, for the codes he had previously. To let Ethan know that she will be preparing a vegetarian meal for Hugh's dinner, Zoe gives him a call. To tell Zoe about a spaghetti sauce recipe his mother used, Ethan calls Guido. When Ethan gets home that evening, he discovers that Jules's daughter is giving birth. She had a healthy baby girl and names her Ethan in honor of the man who allowed them to stay in his house. Ethan maintains they can stay as long as they like despite Jules's assertion that they must depart as agreed. According to Jules, the family likes a smaller home so they can live close to one another. When Ethan visits Zoe again, he finds out that Hugh had asked her to the prom, but she refused since she couldn't dance. Just as Tina gets home, Ethan makes the decision to assist her. She is moved to tears as she watches them dance. After eating supper together as a family, Tina advises Ethan that he should eventually tell Zoe about his condition. They end up sharing a bed. The albino is staying at the Grand Hotel, Vivi informs Ethan the following morning. When Ethan arrives there, he sees the wolf. The bad guys board a vehicle Mitad is driving. Ethan pursues them and crashes into the car several times before finally pushing them all over a footbridge. In order to allow Mitad to go back to his family, Ethan spares the wolf and the albino as they depart. Ethan chases the bad guys into the underground, where he starts to feel lightheaded and his nose starts to bleed. The albino pushes a barely conscious Ethan toward the train tracks before the wolf can shoot him. The wolf yells at him to kill Ethan while he waits for the train to arrive. When the train is about to pass, Ethan regains enough motion to shove the albino in its path. The wolf runs away as he collapses. When he awakens, Vivi has brought him to her house. She warns him of the wolf's escape, but she also lets him know that the drug's favorable effects on his treatment were successful. To meet Hugh and his family, Ethan, Tina, and Zoe travel. Ethan's father introduces him to the wolf, his business partner. They shake hands awkwardly after recognizing one another. They are all led inside the club by Hugh's parents. Tina finally discovers that Ethan is doing a task. She suspects he has been telling her lies, but he tells her that this is not the case. Ethan chases after the warriors of the wolf as they fire at him. Before trapping the wolf in an elevator, he kills the goons. He fires at the elevator's wiring, causing it to tumble to the ground. Hugh and Zoe, meantime, locate a quiet space where they can dance and have their first kiss. Ethan discovers the wolf as he crawls out of the elevator. He loses strength once more and is unable to shoot him. The wolf reaches for the rifle after he drops it, but Vivi enters and pushes it to Ethan so he may finish the job. He declines and puts the gun down as he considers Tina and Zoe. By herself, Vivi shoots the wolf after grabbing it. Later, Ethan is still residing in the beachfront home with Zoe. There have been tough days, but they are still attempting to have a good relationship, he tells Tina as we hear him setting up a Christmas tree, 
having previously believed that he wouldn't survive to see Christmas. Ethan tells Tina that he hasn't always been there for her and Zoe as he ought to have been when she shows up in person. In order for Ethan to make them hot chocolate, Zoe approaches and invites her inside. Tina and Zoe sit together while Ethan enters a different room. She queries her mother about Ethan's future plans. Ethan discovers a box containing a sizable syringe and a Christmas greeting from Vivi. In order for him to continue spending time with his family, she gave him the medication. Vivi is standing outside the residence, keeping an eye on the family inside. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.